Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And uh, on that note, um, I'll go ahead and get started. Obviously, we might have some people that join us as we go. Uh, but first, I want to just say hi. Ha uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Marnie Dow. I use the pronouns she, her, and hers. And I am the Assistant Director for Student Involvement at UNLV. Uh, I also want to go ahead and introduce Sergio. Sergio, you want to say hi? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sergio Bustos. I am a Program Assistant for Student Involvement and Activities. I'm going to be helping out Marnie uh, in today's panel. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the chat. I, I'll either answer them there or bring them to the panelists' attention. So, thank you. Awesome. Um, so, just a quick idea of what our goals are for today. Um, today, we have a bunch of uh, representatives here from several of our academic or pre-professional based organizations. So, we're just going to talk to them about their organizations, what the experiences of being in their organization is like, how they're managing in the virtual world, um, what they how they add to the campus uh, community and the academic experience on campus. And then obviously we want to answer any questions that you all have. We have a big group today. Um, so just as, as for all our panelists, just so you know how I'm going to run it today, um, because we have so many, what I'm going to do is the first question is just really going to be an opportunity for everyone to introduce themselves. So I'll actually go down my list and sort of say in order. Um, of who's going to go, but then after that, um, when if, if I add, ask a question and you have an answer, let's just try with the unmute yourself and go. If it gets too hectic with too many people going at once, then we'll start putting names in the chat box. But for now, um, after that first question, just feel free if you feel like you have an answer to a question, just unmute yourself, and go, and we'll kind of make it work um, between everyone. And as I said, for any of our participants, feel free to ask questions at any time in the chat or Q and A. Um, and Sergio and I will make sure we get to it. Um, so on that, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, I'm gonna go around, can everyone just introduce yourself and the name of your organization? If you go by an acronym, make sure you give us the full name of your organization and the acronym. We know for a lot of incoming students, there's so many acronyms on campus. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're reminding them what those acronyms mean. And then just take two or three minutes to tell us a little bit about your organization. Um, and then we'll get into more detail as we go. Um, so, why don't we start with uh, the future Latinos in medicine? Hi, everyone. My name is Aubriana, and I'm the president of Future Latinos in Medicine, or FLM. Um, and we're an organization on campus that's dedicated to helping the underrepresented Latino community and undergraduate students. So, some things that we do is we um, help students find resources like volunteering opportunities. We have a lot of um, physicians and medical students come and speak to our members and give presentations. And then we also just help out and help with the Toro clinics. And we have a lot of um, a lot of great opportunities to offer our members. Awesome. Thanks, Adriana. Um, let's go next with the American Medical Women's Association. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily Carter, and I'm the president and founder of the American Medical Women's Association pre-medical branch on campus. We go by AMWA or AMWA, however you want to say it, really. Um, so our missions and goals is really to enhance women in medicine and advocate for women's health. So some unique things about us is we don't require a membership fee, which is a little bit different. We wanna just have as many people as we can who are interested in women's health and advocating for women in medicine in general. Um, and then we also have developed a mentorship collaboration with the AMWA chapter at UNLV School of Medicine. And we're also working on one with Toro. So we have a lot of medical student representation in our organization and mentorship. Great. Thanks, Emily. Um, why don't we go next with the Great Works Book Club? Uh, hi, I'm Kevin with the Kevin Never with the Great Works Book Club. We're uh, a book club dedicated to to reading great works. So it just class uh, a bunch of classics. Uh, we meet twice a month to read short short selections from classical literature, uh, and we do this because we believe that uh, that uh, reading a lot of classical literature and just reading in general is uh, objectively beneficial to our academic experience. It helps us think quicker and it help it it's just uh, it's just a good way to I would say I, I don't know Im uh, improve your your critical thinking skills and uh, there's always pizza at the club 
it's free entry and it's just a fun time. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, next up is going to be the American Hotel and Lodging Association. Hello guys, I'm Josh Klein, the president of American Hotel and Lodging Association. We also go by AHLA. Um, our club's main focus is to prepare hospitality students for uh, after they graduate, meaning like helping them with their resume, introducing them to connections, and hopefully get like an internship or a job set up for them after they graduate. Great, thanks, Josh. Um, next up is the UNLV Collegiate DECA. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Colin Ermine. I'm the president of UNLV Collegiate DECA. Although we usually just go by UNLV DECA, DECA doesn't, ha it used to have an acronym, but it no longer is just DECA, so don't worry about that. Um, maybe some of you have heard about DECA from your time in high school, but for those who haven't, UNLV Collegiate DECA is a business organization here on campus whose mission is to provide opportunities for leadership development, civic consciousness, career awareness, social intelligence, and professional development. Although we are part of the Lee Business School, we are open to all students and majors, and participation doesn't require that you be well-versed in any business knowledge. I myself am an accounting and computer science major, and we have members from a variety of backgrounds all over campus. Great, thanks, Colin. Um, the next is going to be Society of Asian Scientists and Engineers. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Tangeriana. You can Uh, the acronym is SACE, S-A-S-E, and so basically our club is uh, a professional development club, and our goal is to help you guys uh, be prepared for the workforce and to provide you uh, workshops for, uh, so you can improve your soft skills. And so uh, other, or your classes prepare you for the actual job while we kind of train you guys to uh, improve your soft skills. So we have workshops on how like to uh, write your resume, how to dress professionally, um, and how to just talk to employers. So you have a higher chance of getting that internship, that interview, or like that job that you want. And so that's basically the gist of SACE. Great, thank you. Okay, um, next up is gonna be Phi Beta Lambda. Hi, my name is Vivian, and I'm the president of Phi Beta Lambda, or PBL for short. Um, PBL is basically the college level of FBLA, um, Future Business Leaders of America, which some of you may know from high school. Um, and our focus is to help business students or those interested in business um, to get more opportunities. So our meetings are going to do things like discuss internship opportunities, shadowing opportunities, and hopefully bring business professionals to visit and speak about their experience. Great. Thanks, Vivian. Uh, next will be the UNLV criminal justice mock trial team. Hi, my name is Andrea Santian, and I'm president of the UNLV criminal justice mock trial team. We receive a fake case at the beginning of the year, either civil or criminal, and we argue it on the defense and prosecution slash plaintiff sides. We compete against other universities in the country, and we foster our students' critical thinking skills. We help them their arguments, and we help to foster the next generation of attorneys. Great. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to see the UNLV Scientista Foundation. Hello, everyone. My name is Angelica Diaz. I'm the communications director for UNLV Scientista. UNLV Scientista is an organization that is uh, to empower women in STEM. Um, so we have a lot of networking opportunities, volunteer work, we do tutoring, things like that. So, and we're just here to support women in STEM. Great. Thank you. Um, the First Generation Club. 
Hello, my name is Cricket. I am the president of the First Generation Club, also gone by 1GC um, as our acronym. Um, what 1GC really does is kind of create this community and develop ways to support first generation students, uh, transfer students, and non traditional students, just to help the kind of the adjustment to a new environment, because um, college is a new experience for all of us, um, lifestyle and academic traditions that kind of happen at UNLV. Great, thanks. Um, next up, the UNLV Toastmasters. Felice, are you there? Sorry, I thought I. Hello, okay. everyone. I'm Felisa. I'm the secretary in the UNLV Toastmasters. So Toastmasters uh, helps individuals overcome their public speaking fears to enable them to become better communicators and leaders. Uh, we provide a supportive, positive learning experience. Uh, when you attend our meetings, you could, you know, participate in an impromptu communication session where you practice answering questions Try your uh, your best not to say filler words like uh, oh my god, <laughs> like, and you could also participate by, you know, preparing a speech and then delivering in the meetings. Uh, we meet uh, every Wednesday, so we have a meeting tomorrow at seven. I mean, I'm sorry, six feet, six fifteen. And yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> Great, um, Leah Ambassador, you're up next. Hello everyone, my name is Lila and I'm currently the senior lead of the Lee Ambassadors. The Lee Ambassadors is a select group of students in the Lee Business School and we're responsible for representing the Business School as well as coordinating the Medallion Program. So it's almost two programs in one. The Medallion Program is open to the students that are in their upper division classes in the Business School and it's kind of a program that gets students involved with the university. So they'll participate in speaker and career events and do things that will enhance their networking skills. And the Lee Ambassadors are more of a select group that are able to coordinate the program and we go through an interview process where we're able to make different connections and we have different networking opportunities. Great, thanks. And then last but not least, the American Medical Student Association. <clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Nicholas Martin-Rosin and I'm the recruitment co-chair for the American Medical Student Association, or AMSA for short. Uh, we are you know, a medical-based club. We uh, offer five different categories of events that we uh, go through each semester, which is humanitarian, professional development, physician shadowing, um, wellness, and fundraising. So we do a lot in within the local community with our humanitarian, but we also get to go into clinics and uh, tour medical schools and things like that. Thank you. Great. That's a really full panel of orgs and I'm super excited about. Um, so I'm going to take before we ask the next question, I'm just going to take two minutes to provide a little context about student orgs. While I do that, if any of our panelists would like to put in the chat box, the name of your org, maybe an email contact. And then if you want to put any of your social media handles or anything so that those individuals who are attending can follow up and uh, reach out to you. Uh, feel free to do that while I kind of talk about student orgs overall. It's a kind of a good way time for you to do that. So just to give everyone a little by little context, we have approximately 400 student organizations on campus. As the assistant director for involvement, uh, my role on campus is to really not only uh, help those student organizations register and provide structure for those organizations, but to make sure we're supporting them and uh, providing opportunities for all students on campus to understand how to get involved in them. So that's really how I uh, work every day on campus. Um, for our students who are interested in joining a student organization, today we have a handful of our academic and pre-professional organizations uh, represented here. We have, this is actually our largest category of student organizations on campus. Um, and this is just a small number of them. So if you have interest in understanding more about the student organizations that exist on campus, who they are, what they're about, how to reach out to them. What I wanna make sure I promote today is the Involvement Center, which is our online portal for all 400 student organizations on campus. 
So the website is involvementcenter.unlv.edu. Uh, Sergio, once everyone stops putting in their contact information, if you can add that link in there, that'd be great. Um, but it's involvementcenter.unlv.edu. That's our online portal. It's a full directory of all of our student organizations. You can click on any organization, see their mission statement, some basic information, FAQs, and how to reach out to them, just like our uh, panelists are providing to you now. So if there is an academic discipline that you are going to be majoring in that we didn't cover today, that that org doesn't seem to be represented here today, for example, the Psychology Club is a really big academic organization on campus that isn't uh, represented here today. So if your major isn't represented, uh, that doesn't mean that that organization doesn't exist on campus. I'd highly encourage you to go to the Involvement Center. Um, and find out, search for an organization, and a reminder that it's not just academic organizations on campus. We have faith-based organizations. We have cultural-based organizations. We have fraternities and sororities on campus. Uh, we have special interest organizations. Uh, if there's something you're really passionate about or interested in, um, just go to the Involvement Center and search for that. Say you're really into Star Wars and you go to the Involvement Center and search under the Organizations tab for Star Wars, you'll find the Society of Lightsaber Duelists, which is a really cool organization on campus. Um, so there might be something for you. And then the last plug related to the student organizations that I wanna say is um, that if you go to the Involvement Center and you don't find the organization that meets your needs or passion area, you can start your own. We have, uh, it's really easy to start a new organization. You just need four friends who are interested in the same thing as you. So a total of five actively enrolled student members. And then you need to find a full time faculty or staff member who's willing to be your advisor. Once you do those 2 things, we'll help walk you through the rest of the process. Registration actually just opened for uh, existing and new organizations. So a reminder to all of our panelists. Hope you saw my email come through yesterday, but it's time to re register your student organizations. Or if anyone has a new organization, they're excited to start. Now's the time to do that. I think those are all the free plugs I want to give right now. I've got a few that I'll make sure I get in at the end. Um, so I want to get back though mostly to hearing from our students, uh, from our panelists. So why don't we just talk a little bit about community? I think the idea of community is really becoming incredibly important right now with everyone uh, existing in this virtual world. Finding a group of students that you can connect with, um, whether it be based on academic discipline, interest, hobby, whatever the case may be, is going to be really essential for a lot of our students, particularly our incoming students, from being connected to the institution. Um, so do any of our panelists want to talk about what that sense of community feels like or looks like within your own organization? Uh, like I said, feel free to just kind of chime in by unmuting yourself, and if, you, if it becomes too much, we'll, we'll go one by one. But let's just start with anyone who wants to chime in. I can go first and talk about this. Um, so, again, I'm from the American Medical Women's Association pre-medical branch um, and community is one of the biggest parts of our organization as a whole. Uh, because we are technically women's is in the name, a lot of our members tend to be female um, and we're all pre-medical or healthcare bound. And since we're on this COVID track now, we are still having our virtual meetings. We're going to be virtual this entire fall semester via Zoom. But we're still emphasizing the importance of building a community, contributing to our community through virtual volunteer opportunities that we have with several Las Vegas local organizations, including Susan G. Combe in Nevada. Um, and we're also very focused in our community along with our mentorship that we have from the medical schools here as well. So for us, that's a big factor that we're contributing to. And we're also going along with the COVID guidelines. I guess I will hop in next. Um, again, I'm from the First Generation Club, and for us, kind of that sense of community is kind of one of our key things that we want to kind of um, gear towards, just because as first generation students, um, it's really difficult to kind of try to figure out college as it is. So with it being this new virtual um, kind of world that we're going through, it's really kind of something new for everyone. So having that sense of community, that way students know that they're not the only ones going through it um, is kind of one of our things. Because uh, first generation students, you know, their parents either didn't go to college or maybe they didn't finish, so they don't have as much information. Um, so having a group of people, either like friends or just other people you can just talk to and see 
what struggles people are going through or just to have a blast because kind of what our um, our goals for this semester is to kind of have uh, have uh, helpful tips and tricks for you guys uh, as well as some fun events to kind of be not another zoom call um, event for classes or meetings uh, to kind of have just that sense of community have fun even though we're all still going through college uh, as this first time thing uh, but as well as going through this whole uh, pandemic issue uh, and trying to make sure that we're not uh, just stuck in our four walls i'll go next if that's okay uh, for the mock trial team, we experience community when we host a competition here at UNLV every January. This year, it will look different, of course, but we always have our judges be attorneys that are already practicing in Las Vegas. We have them come and judge our students and some of them are also judges themselves so it's a cool experience for us to be able to meet them and to get that exposure to real practicing attorneys we also have students come in from all over the country to come to our competition and we're able to meet new people that way we also have our sister school is usc so we do a lot of things with them and last year they were short a few members so myself and a couple other people even helped them out we flew out to LA and competed with them and for us community is really about fighting for our community and in order to be successful in doing so you need to be convincing in what you're saying so we help our students with their arguments like their direct examinations and cross examinations to help them make it as as articulate and convincing as possible we help them with their public speaking skills as well since of course that is a major component to, to trial advocacy and yeah um i would also like to note that our competition here in January is open to the community. So we do get some people that come and watch it as well. Hi, I'd like to go next. Um, so, and I'm representing UNLV Scientista and UNLV Scientista absolutely fosters a sense of community. Uh, as you guys probably know, women are highly underrepresented in STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, and we definitely provide a place for uh, women of all STEM fields to come together and kind of find each other and, uh, you know, help each other with homework and even just just make friends and, uh, you know, get yourself with people that are in the same field as you. You know, for example, some of my upper division, I'm a physics student and some of my upper division classes in physics and math, you know, there's like one or two, um, you know, females in the classes and, you know, it, it gives us a way to come together and support each other in that way as well. I'd love uh, to go I'm from Future Latinas in Medicine and community is something that's very important to our organization. Uh, most of our members are come from Latino backgrounds and are usually first generation and we can all relate to those struggles and even if those two things don't relate to you, we're all pre-health students and we all know the struggles and challenges that come along with that. And our organization is made just so that we can provide support and encouragement to each other and build that family bond so we can help each other and so that we all can pursue our uh, career goals. Uh, again, I'm representing uh, American Medical Student Association, AMSA, and uh, especially with what's going on right now, how everything has to be virtual and stuff like that, we're gonna have a lot of uh, guest speakers this semester with, uh, if it's doctors, uh, past UNLV students that are now at UNLV Med School and uh, things like that. Uh, pertaining to our humanitarian events that we offer, we do go to uh, Opportunity Village and volunteer a lot there when it comes to the events with in October and December with uh, Halloween and Christmas time. And uh, I'm not sure how, we're going to do it this year. If it happens, I'm sure we'll be there. But um, most of the time, we're going to be virtual this semester with our meetings and things like that. I'll go. No one else. Um, 
for, for UNLV DECA, if we didn't have our community, we wouldn't have our chapter and our organization. I like to say that UNLV DECA is UNLV's premier professional development organization. And for us to really work, we need that sense of community and the bond that we create together. Why we teach people to become better leaders, we teach them to become more confident in themselves, how to speak in front of others, and how to develop their professional image regardless of what your background or your major is. Um, and in doing that, we grow, grow closer together. We do a competition every year at the International Career and Development Conference, and we work with to our community partners to give back to our local community, both on campus and in the Las Vegas area. We work with the high school division of Nevada DECA to work with their conferences and their competitions and teach high school students um, about the whole process. And we also work with the Asian Community Development Council to do a variety of events and other community partners that we also work on. And another thing, another aspect, even though we're uh, professionals and you know we do all the, the, the work, we also like to have a lot of fun socials. We do things like Halloween nights, we do um, Friendsgivings, we do game nights, we do all sorts of things because we know that with all work and no play, it's not always that great. Um, I'll go next if no one's gonna go. Um, so for Society of Asian Scientists and Engineers, we typically cater towards uh, Asians. You don't have to be Asian to join the club, but we typically cater towards Asians as the name says. And so, you know, sometimes uh, depending on your background, you may not have other family members or uh, people you can relate to that are in the workforce. And so we really want to build a community where it's really safe for you to uh, practice like public speaking, talking to employers and learning from each other. And so we really support uh, community and making sure that we support you guys on um, making sure that you really succeed in your careers. Hello, uh, it's me again, Lisa from Toastmasters. Uh, so Toastmaster is a, a perfect place if you have a big fear of public speaking that was me uh a few years ago i couldn't speak to other people it was so difficult just even talking to people especially to a crowd um but thanks to toastmasters you know i was able to feel like in the friendly environment where i could decide the topic that i wanted to tell them like a speech and just deliver that and eventually you know that helped me overcome a public speaking fear I mean, sometimes I still get nervous, but it's not as difficult as before. So if you have that issue that, oh my God, like you, it's, it's difficult just to speak in front of a crowd, or just or speak virtually here. Cause sometimes too, like you just get nervous in a Zoom meeting, even though you're far away. But, you know, through uh, Toastmasters, we follow a sandwich method. So the sandwich method is, we let you know what you did awesome and then we tell you what you should work on and then lastly we ended in what a good notes uh, so i love that method and i feel like it has helped me out a lot and what really helped me out too was just the other members the other experienced members that give you guidance on how to interact and how to use your eye contact your hands so they go very specific and as a good community, we just focus on public speaking and that's just a total message. But the fact that it's a friendly environment helps you just overcome that fear because communication skills is important in your personal and professional life. Thank you. Um, I, hello again, uh, I'm from the Great Works Book Club and uh usually on an average meeting day we uh we just sit around in uh in a small group of of uh, members and we discuss the the literature that we read for that week or two set of two weeks um and we we try to uh implement a dialectical discussion wherein we we bounce off ideas off uh, off of each other to better understand the reading that we just went through and it's uh it's a good way to to help you think uh in a deeper way about what you just read
Anyone else want to touch on community before I move on? I can't. I'm not quite sure if we caught everyone or if anyone else wanted. Great. Um, oh, I so forgot we'll... real quick. Uh, we ahead. also have pizza. <laughs> Kevin likes to sell the pizza. I like it. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one, I know most of our organizations are related to a specific academic major or discipline, but not all of them. But I still think this uh, question really does apply to everyone here. Um, let's talk about how membership in your organization enhances the academic experience. Um, particularly, you know, what are you learning in the classroom that you're bringing into your organization? What are the things that you think are missing from the classroom that your organization is helping with? Talk about that academic uh, connection with your organization and how you're helping students develop uh, based on their academic major or discipline or something like that. Hello. So I, like I feel like, oh, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, so once again, Felisa from Toastmasters. I think uh, in the classroom, you learn, you know, all this stuff, but the, uh, just kind of like the, kind of like the downside of like learning is that if you don't apply it at that moment, uh, it's difficult to retain it. So what I love about Toastmasters is that after I learned something, I could actually like do a speech about it and then tell the audience uh, the audience about what I have learned and that helps me retain that information. So that's one way to actually like kind of learn and memorize, well not memorize, but internally uh, remember what you have learned by teaching others and that's the best way to learn. And so through those speeches, because the speeches, uh, you're allowed to decide the topic that you want to talk about and then you're teaching others in a very eloquent and you're trying to practice those uh, presentation skills. And that's just the real world. The real world, you have to explain what you learn. You have to just say it in a way where everyone can understand it. And yeah, thank you. Hi, so I'm from the American Hotel and Lodging Association, Pam. Um, we're gonna have guest speakers from the industry come in and uh, speak about some of their experiences because you really can't, uh, in the classroom, they can't make up every situation that happens in a hotel because it's a 24 seven operation. So uh, we're gonna have guest speakers and we're gonna also have property tours. So you could see like what goes on in a hotel and daily operation. I think as a business major, um, some of the most important things are definitely networking and leadership. And that's not always something that you necessarily get in the classroom. It's more of something that you have to practice. So being an ambassador really helps with that because we're, we're a small group of students leading a bigger group of students, which is the medallion program. And kind of both things, play hand in hand because we're networking with a bunch of people, not only students themselves, but also professionals in the industry. When we're in these medallion events, we're able to make great connections and learn about other industries. Like I have a focus in marketing, but sometimes I'll sit through finance events just because I think that's interesting and it's great to meet new people. Hi. Okay, so I'm Andrea again with the mock trial team and I have noticed that a majority of classes, the structure is lecture and then exam and you're kind of like passive learning. But with a mock trial team, we're really actively learning all of the skills. Like, for example, we use the federal rules of evidence a lot. And instead of like being taught what they are and taking notes down, instead of doing that, we're on our feet. We're doing our examinations and we're using the rules of evidence because you usually use them when you get objected to. So we learn them on the spot. And if we get it wrong, it's okay, we get it wrong and we figure it out. So there's a lot of active learning involved with my organization. And I would like to say we also do have quite a bit of networking opportunities. One of our judges is a practicing attorney, which gives us a lot of access directly to the legal field and how it's working. 
uh, in the past, uh, she's let us use her office even to practice sometimes. So that's a really valuable experience. And like I said, we do get to meet a lot of the attorneys in town through our competition. And our head coach, uh, Dr. Mitchell, will also have guest speakers come in and speak to us every now and then. And that is also really, really valuable to us because we're able to ask them questions and get answers. And we've been able to speak to the district attorney. We've spoken to assistant United States attorneys. So we've gotten to speak to a lot of really cool people in the legal profession through being in mock trial. Awesome. I can go. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we have this thing called the International Career and Development Council or Conference, known as ICDC, and that is something that our work throughout the year is building towards. It's a, it's not only just a conference, but it's also a competition where you're able to network and compete against thousands of other Collegiate DECA members in a variety of different topics or whatever it is that you like. There's role plays, there's presentations, there's things like that. And these put you in a real life scenario with being judged by real life prof professionals. And they, they run you through the course of like, okay, how do you apply that knowledge that you've been learning in the classroom into a real life setting and how this is what it would look like if you were doing that type of job. And to get to that point throughout the year, we have a lot of different workshops and other um, activities that we do that we help to prepare people. And so we bring in a lot of uh, different speakers, professional speakers and professionals from different companies. We've worked with Microsoft, Tesla, Target, and other companies to have speakers come in and give insight how to make yourself stand out in a field of applicants and how you can break in to the career of your dreams. So I'll go from the American Medical Women's Association pre-medical branch again. Um, so setting us apart from the classroom, um, UNLV has this huge pre-medical base on campus. Um, and especially when you're a biology major, it can be challenging to stand out, especially in the classroom where you're just learning material testing on it and knowing that. But if you're pursuing any type of graduate school, any type of medical career, we all know that there's a bigger package you have to have to that. So AMA really helps facilitate for our members through mentorship. Like other pre-medical organizations, we have medical students come in. We have actual physicians and nurses come in to talk to students about what their daily life is. And then there's chances to gain clinical experience through those interactions there, which is another very important part of being a pre-medical or healthcare bound student in general. And then we also give the opportunity to not facilitate so much competition between pre-medical students, but more of like a sisterhood and understanding and supportive group to help each other. So that makes us stand out a little bit more in that we're not so much about the competition, but more about empowerment, understanding where people think a woman's place in medicine, but where it can be in the future. Like we analyze the pay gap there is between physicians and the medical field. We look at, oh, there's less women in this specific specialty than there are in others. Why is that? How can we change that? So we facilitate opportunities for advocacy and then for bringing out your own passions. If you're someone who's interested in women in the healthcare field, women in medicine in general, then AMA is probably the place to be for you. Hello from UNLV Scientista again. So our organization is definitely uh, helps uh, academically as well outside the classroom. We do events, uh, host events such as study nights where, um, you know, lately we've been meeting virtually through Zoom and we, we log in and study with each other. And then that way people can ask each other questions and, you know, you meet people in your same major. So it's really helpful for that. Um, you can talk to people, you know, you would have maybe not have spoken to otherwise. And in the past, we've had many workshops where uh, you, with people like Google and fostering to uh, other technology-based uh, STEM fields and you know, um, pr providing people opportunity with that, opportunities with that uh, to further their um, education in those fields. And also we, um, we haven't gone, not this year, but 
In the past, we've gone to this thing called Scientist Symposium, and it takes place in Boston, Massachusetts. And, uh, you know, we go out there and it's a place where you can network, meet women of uh, the Scientist Foundation from all over the country, and uh, it provides a lot of more academic resources as well. All right, uh, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't cutting anyone off. Um, some of you all have alluded to it, but uh, I figured it's a good time to kind of jump in with the idea of how do you uh, continue to be a successful student organization in this virtual world? And how do we help new students coming in, new members? Um, so if your organization, a lot for a lot of orgs, it's still a little up in the air, still figuring out what life in a virtual world looks like for their organization. But does anyone want to talk about their plans on how they're going to continue to exist virtually uh, this coming semester, keep students engaged, help continue with that community that we've talked about. Uh, I'll, I'll go first. Um, uh, so, unfortunately, unfortunately for the for my club, Great Works is uh, we haven't we don't have anything fully concrete, uh, but we are definitely looking into options uh into the options uh because we want to implement something like zoom calls where or video conferencing uh, uh so that we can continue to discuss face to face in in a way uh the the books that we're reading or the the excerpts that we're reading and we're also considering doing some sort of uh forum or online chat forum through which we can uh discuss outside of club hours Uh, for a Society of Asian Scientists and Engineers, uh, we're planning to make our general meetings on Twitch, which is the streaming website. Uh, we think it will be really accessible for uh, members to just go on there. And if you can't meet with us, it will be available, I believe, for two more weeks um, on our account. And we also are creating a Discord server um so that members can easily reach us if they have any questions about our general meetings our opportunities or like anything else that they need and um for other events as well it's going to be on twitch so hopefully that'll still allow us to connect with our members we're still figuring out if we will be able to do our competition season virtually uh, but what we do know that we're definitely doing is something called Urban Adventure, which we've done in the past before. It's um, similar and that we're still doing a trial and it's something um, done kind of like throughout the Department of Criminal Justice. They try to make it lifelike where they have an actual crime scene and they have a separate class that investigates it and figures out who they want to charge. And then once they do charge one, then like the those of us who chose to be defense attorneys for the exercise get involved. And those of us who choose to be prosecutors are involved from the beginning. We get to like go to those crime scenes. Obviously it'll be virtual now, but yeah, we, we will still uh, be doing stuff. We'll still be having a trial, so. Um, yeah, we, we still have things going on and we are um, meeting over Zoom for our practices as well as we have a group me where we talk um, when we're not meeting over Zoom. Um, in terms of the Lee Ambassadors, we do monthly socials and professional development events that are just limited to the Ambassadors. So we are transitioning all of those online and the monthly socials are kind of just more fun events that we do as a group to keep everyone in, interacting and things like that. But in terms of the medallion program, we typically host two career events and two speaker events per semester. And because of the whole COVID situation last semester, we were only able to do two of those in person. So we were able to kind of demo how we wanted to run through everything. So we're having some events be in person, well, not in person, but a virtual event that would be live over a WebEx meeting, sort of like this. And then we also have other events that are LinkedIn learning activities and other type of like TED Talks or professional videos that will allow our members to stay engaged within the program. With the uh, American Medical Student Association, uh, 
as well as I'm sure many organizations are doing. We're going to do our general meetings that we have once a month through a possibly recorded session so that people can just watch over it and uh, get the gist of what's happening uh, with events as a lot of them are going to be virtual if they are guest speakers or doctors coming in to talk. We are also going to keep people interested with some social distancing events. I know that we are planning on doing like a hiking trip with, of course, a limited amount of people. So we do have those social events. We also offer um, something we called active AMSA, where if you post a picture on Instagram to your story of you um, working out, you get hours to fulfill your requirements, which our requirements are either 20 hours or eight events per semester. You know, we Scientista, some of the really fun things we've been doing, uh, we've been actually already hosting virtual uh, events since last semester. We primarily meet through either Zoom, Google Hangouts, and even Instagram live stream just to make sure everyone has access to our meetings. Um, we probably think our meetings for next semester will be all virtual as well, and we do have plenty of virtual events, like we have Scientista Book Club, Scientista Game Night, and Trivia Nights. Uh, you know, Scientista Netflix movie nights that we've hosted with a national organization as well. Um, and uh, recipe exchanges, virtual body workouts. So we have a ton of things to, that we link to and you guys can join virtually as well. Hello, this is Lisa from Toastmasters. Uh, the great thing about Toastmasters is that if you want to practice your presentation, your class presentation school is coming up on the 24th. So if you have a class presentation that you want to practice in front of a friendly crowd, you can do so in Toastmasters. And we're going to you know, continue to meet uh, via Zoom. We have been meeting via Zoom. Uh, you know, but school is coming up and presentations are coming up. And then you're also welcome. Um, also, people, you know, practice their work presentations with us. And that way they can get some practice before the the real thing. Um, so this is a great thing about to uh, Toastmasters. That's that's why I, I love Toastmasters. It has helped me feel more confident speaking to others. And then um, also like you know, uh, just doing it via Zoom because right now everything's via Zoom and you get to like know like, okay, if your camera's okay, like any issues that may come up with your presentation or anything. And yeah, we meet every Wednesday at 6.15 and I'm actually giving a speech tomorrow. So if you join us, that will be awesome. For AHLA, um, it's kind of still up in the air because Clearly, we can't do proper online, um, but um, the news is probably going to uh, be broken what we're going to do next week. So stay tuned. Or um, you want to be DECA. Last semester, we had success holding our meetings and events online, and we even had Microsoft come in and they helped us create a, a virtual like workshop thing where they went over to the seminar and went over how to do product and stuff and talked to our students about this new um, you know digital age and everything and everything being virtual and whatnot. Um, as we look to the future, one the most important thing for us is our member safety and keeping sure that everyone is able to stay together and stay engaged and have a community to be a part of while everyone weathers the storm together. And so to do that, we're doing things like revamping our social media so that there's more engagement between the, the, the leadership and the officer team and the members. We're doing things like we're looking into um, a Discord server so that we can have um, socials and stuff online where we can do like a game night, uh, do things like karaoke, stuff like that, you know, try to make it fun, make sure that people are staying in touch and keeping that community together. And we're also, um, looking to, I forgot what I was going to say, <laughs> you know, just, just working to keep, keep everything to, oh yeah, we're also going to have YouTube videos where if you miss a meeting or not able to come, you'll be able to, um, go and watch our recap video that'll explain everything that happened and what things are going on and how you can continue to get involved and stuff like that. Uh, for Phi Beta Lambda, we're basically doing all of our meetings the first semester, at least um, online. 
Uh, we do have an interest form, which I put in the chat. It's uh, bit.ly slash FBLA PBO UNLV. And we'll basically give more information to those who fill it out for when our meetings are going to be. Um, but we're still going to do workshops in our online meetings and uh, the PBO National Leadership Conference will likely still take place because it's in summer of 2021. Um, so we're going to help prepare for anyone who's interested in going to that. Uh, for first generation club, we are still we are planning to do stuff virtually just because the information that we have received from UNLV uh, about events on campus not really being an option because um, that's how we used to always do everything. So it's a new transition for us. Um, but definitely keep up with us on Involvement Center. We'll be updating those events um, and figuring out uh, what platform we're going to be using. I know a lot of our members, we've reached out um, like Zoom or Instagram Live. So we're trying to figure out the best uh, platform to kind of interact with everybody. Uh, we're also doing uh, something with our socials to try to keep that engagement uh, just so uh, people are more uh, able to interact with us as a board, as well as each and every, every member. Uh, we're going to have events that are more geared towards first generation students, as well as just fun events um, in order to kind of have that uh, new way of kind of dealing with this whole pandemic. Uh, but yeah, so as soon as we figure out exactly um, what those events are going to look like, uh, so we had planned for them to be in person, but with news from UNLV, it's probably not going to be an option. Um, but yes, yeah, so definitely keep up with us on our socials and involvement center. Uh, for future Latinos in medicine, uh, we've been frequently using our group meet, which is like a messaging app to still communicate with our members and share like volunteering opportunities and resources. Um, so we still use that to communicate with our members just on the daily. And then for our events and meetings, we've already planned to have most of our events either as a combination of online and in person, depending on what the university says. But we've actually already planned to have our first meeting online via Zoom, and we're going to have uh, Toro Medical students do an online panel. All right, I'm looking at the time and realizing I have so many more questions that I wish I could answer every, ask everyone. I have one question that's been my favorite. Um, at every panel discussion, and I know with this large group of students that everyone can answer, but I'm going to ask if just one or two people would be willing to share. It's obvious you all spend a lot of time in these organizations. You're passionate about these organizations. These organizations matter to you, and that wouldn't be the case if you weren't gaining something personally, not just based on your major or kind of the leadership skills you want in a resume. Does anyone, maybe one or two, one or two of you, want to just talk about personally what your org membership or leadership in your organization has meant to you and how it's maybe made your collegiate experience more meaningful? Um, sure, I'll go. Uh, for First Generation Club, for me, like not just, you know, being proud that I am a First Generation student, but be able to give that kind of support system for First Generation students. Um, as someone that went through first two years, not even realizing I was a first generation student and kind of realizing that it was kind of a struggle and trying to figure out the ins and outs of college. So being able to not only be a part of the organization, but now being um, the president of the organization to kind of help others that are dealing with that same situation that I was in and kind of just giving that extra help and that extra community to uh, make sure that everyone knows that they're not the only ones going through this. Um, and even though this is definitely a new college experience for everyone with being through this pandemic. Um, I feel like the first generation students are ones that are really getting hit the hardest just because they have absolutely no information. Um, so for me, it's just very beneficial to kind of know that I'm helping other students dealing with situations I've been through or other people that I know in our organization, um, those situations they've been through and kind of getting that um, kind of sense of that I'm not the only one doing this. And it's, it's something to be proud of that your first generation, uh, which has unfortunately been some stuff I've been hearing, hearing that people uh, look down upon themselves in their first generation. But in all reality, it is something you should be proud of because you're doing something outside of the box, outside of what your family's done or friends or your circle. Um, so that's kind of what's important for me as first generation club. And um, for me, Mark has made me a 
said more than I thought I could. I started off in the team really shy and I didn't think that I would even get in. And now here I am at the end of my college career and I'm the co-captain and the president of it. So it's definitely gone me out of my box and it's made me a more firm believer in expressing my ideas and in helping out where I see fit. Well, I love these answers and I so wish we had the time to hear everyone's answers because I'm sure everyone's would be just as meaningful. Since we don't have the time, I would encourage those of you who maybe want to hear um, from a specific individual that answer uh, to reach out to them if they put their information in the chat. I'm sure they'd be happy to connect with you and kind of talk about their personal experience. But there's a couple of things before we come up to the end of our time that I want to make sure we touch on. The first is just the uh, general idea of why we encourage students to get involved, not only in student organizations, but any involvement experience. That's anything that occurs outside of the classroom. So not just joining a student organization or starting a student organization, but you know, being really involved with a study group, or um, it might come with your on-campus work experience, or it might come with um, some research that you do with a professor outside of the classroom. Whatever that is, all roads lead to involvement. Uh, just as long as you get involved, that's what is important to our office. Why should you get involved? Just a few of the reasons. Obviously, the students here on this panel have really spoken to how meaningful involvement can be. Um, but from some nerdy statistics uh, to let you know, students who are involved, particularly in student organizations, um, far and above do better academically. They're more likely to graduate. They feel a better connection to the institution. Um, and that really comes from their involvement experience and what they're getting outside of the classroom. They also leave the university with a huge uh, toolbox of skills that maybe you're not getting in the classroom. A lot of time management, how to run a meeting, how to delegate tasks, how to work on a team. Those are things that maybe won't come from your in the classroom experience. So. The thing that I, if I leave you with nothing else regarding involvement, what I always tell students is choose your own adventure. That's my tag log, tagline when it comes to involvement. Every student's involvement experience will look different and that's how it should be. We have 400 student organizations on campus. You have a, a huge wealth of other involvement opportunities. So find the avenue that speaks to you, that's right for you, that gets you excited, you know, build your passion area, whatever the case may be, just find your own adventure when it comes to involvement and follow that path. Our office is here to help you on that journey. Help me make sure you understand what involvement opportunities exist and how to get involved, how to start a new organization, whatever the case may be. So with all of that being said, there's a few shameless plugs I wanna fit in, in our last two minutes. Uh, Sergio, can you put in the chat box our email, which is involvement at unlv.edu. Our social media handles on Instagram and Facebook are at involvement UNLV. And then Sergio, can you also just put in lastly, uh, the involvement center website, which is involvementcenter.unlv.edu. Now, those are all really great resources that I want to make sure you all walk away with today or leave uh, this experience with today. I'm going to stop myself from that ableist uh, term that you leave this experience with today. Um, and last but not least, the last shameless plug I want to give is for the virtual involvement fair. Hopefully all of our student panelists um, got an email from me yesterday about the virtual involvement fair. It is our signature program that happens at the beginning of every fall and spring semester. We'll usually have 2000 students out with about 250 tables in the student union and on the green space. And it's a really fun event with tabling where you get to kind of talk to all of the student organizations that exist on campus. That obviously can't happen right now, but we don't want to just cancel it. So instead, the virtual involvement fair is coming on September 2nd. Mark your calendars. It'll be on September 2nd from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And it's going to be hosted on our social media platforms, uh, specifically on Instagram, Facebook, and our YouTube channel. Um, so for those of you who want to attend that event, just follow us on any of our social media platforms now, and then you'll already be on following us and ready to receive that content on September 2nd for our panelists. If you're not already following us, do so. And also follow us from your organization's social media accounts because sometimes we'll share out your posts. And then if you haven't already, um, and our uh, RSO, um, our registered student organization panelists here, please, please participate in the involvement fair. That's how you get your name out. Um, to incoming students, to students on campus. Um, and I will put in the chat box the bit.ly to our 
involvement uh, website. It's bit.ly slash UNLV fair. Um, that's where you'll find out all information about what a virtual involvement fair even looks like. What does that mean and how to register? So I hope that answers everyone's questions. I see it's 4 o'clock on the dot. I want to thank all of our panelists so much for participating, for be, uh, giving of themselves and their organizations. I wish we had more time to talk to all of you, but I just want to say thank you. And again, choose your own adventure and get involved somehow. Everyone have a great afternoon. Thank you.